Okay, so I'm just calling your Fox here to talk about the Japan trip, and I kind of want to get a sense on what everybody's thinking after the event. So I think the basic thing, everyone's going to arrive just before the summit starts, right? And uh, then, like, Sean's going to be there. It sounds like he's aiming for two and a half weeks. And then you are aiming for two and a half weeks, right? Yeah, I mean, just kind of off the top of my, of my head, that, that seems, that feels right. Uh, and then I'm open to extending that if, if it's like we're having a great time and we keep finding cool things to do. Um, so, like, I'm planning on, like, coming in probably on the, it's like May the 22nd, and uh, 21st, 22nd around there. Okay. And stay in, stay in till, I don't know. <laughs> that's kind of the thing. Is, uh, right. That's so. It's a. Let's do it. It's a good. It's a good reason to have this call because even you're unsure, right? So I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, fuck. How long should I stay? And I certainly. Here's what I don't want to do: is I don't want to buy a ticket that's going to stay a long time. If all you guys are going home, right? Because I've already done. Yeah. I've already done Japan. You know, recently for a long time, and I had a great time. Great time. Um, but th- in the winter, it just doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like the right time just to be hanging out for me, you know. And and I'm, right now, I'm loving Bangkok, so you know. Yeah, that's that thing. Honestly, like I, I want to come back to Thailand as well. I want to come back to Bangkok, I check out Phuket, and Thai as well. So that's kind of what maybe the other reason I'm feeling like you know maybe two two and a half weeks in Japan would be perfect, and then head back to Thailand and do some cool shit there for the I mean, uh, end of December, which is probably going to be colder in Japan anyways, right? Oh, dude, de- de- December is getting cold. Uh, it can be really cold. It um, depends. You know, you just never know in Japan, but for sure December gets cold, and then January is absolutely ice block. Yeah, so that's, I think that's what I was feeling like. You know, like two and a half, two, two and a half weeks would probably be perfect. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, like I so like I definitely want to do the hotel in Osaka. I think that sounds awesome. It's gonna be right there and check out stuff in that region. And then uh, I think the snowboarding trip would be super cool. But that realistically for me, more than three days of snowboarding, that's probably gonna be like you know, three to five days, probably three days. I'll be like, all right, that that's great. I did it. You know, my legs probably burn burn it up. So I can't imagine I would want to do that for much longer. Okay, so you're so thinking. What th- did you have in mind? And- you're thinking three days of snowboarding, right? Well, yeah, if it's like a second. You know, if you're in an area and we're doing like kind of going one place and chilling out and going another, you know, maybe it's like, like five, six days. But um, I don't know. I have never snowboarded in Japan before, so I don't know okay. what that's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I just know from my previous experience after like three, four days, my legs and my body's like shot. And I'm like, all right, that's, that's good. Let's go rest. So, that's a good um, point, you know. I'm open to you're right. No, that's a good point because I haven't snowboarded so long or skied in so long that I kind of forgot. But yeah, you do get. I think you get a point of, uh, uh, like, uh, what's that called? Uh, that something of returns where you're not getting the return that you got from the first few yeah. days, right? You know, the first few days you're just like it's just awesome, right? It's just <laughs> fantastic. And then if you stay for two yeah. weeks. You start to hang out in the lodge a bit, and you know what I mean. <laughs> every every fall hurts more. <laughs> every fall hurts more, and you tend to like not be on the first lift in the morning, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. You start dragging your feet. So I, I know for me, like there's a sweet spot of like get out there, have fun, and then uh, do something different. So okay, uh, so let's shoot. Or, you know, Why don't we shoot for three days, and then uh, we can always extend it for a day, but. I think that's actually pretty smart because when I think about it, when I went up there, we probably skied three days, maybe four, you know, and uh, and then uh, when I went to Yamagata, Zaos, and then I, I think I did the same thing in uh, Hokkaido because uh, I was on a package tour, so I'm, those are generally for weekends, you know, they're like for weekend warriors, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's actually good. So that's exactly what I was like nailing down an exact uh, approximate amount of days, you know, because 
Like I know some guys who really want they they want to do thirty days a year. They want to be in the snow, right? So I was wondering if anybody was like that. But it sounds like like Reese has never skied. Um, you know, Sean, we'll see. So let's see. So you and Sean originally were talking about two and a half weeks. So let's talk this. Let's look at the schedule. Let's look at. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, November. Uh, actually, it would be November, December, right? November. Yeah. Calendar. Okay. Yeah, for me, like, part of that decision is, um, like, obviously the weather being colder will be probably not as fun. And the other thing is, Japan would be more expensive staying longer. Uh, even though you know, there are ways to cut the expenses, I feel like you know that can kind of add up a little bit more. So, exactly. So I, like, I love the idea of being there for Christmas, but it's like the extra two weeks before that is where it feels like, uh, you know, I, I just wasn't feeling it. So. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It, it makes sense because I feel the same way. I'd love to be there for Christmas, you know, and uh, I, I, I like Christmas, and I like the new New Year too, you know, but. I will say I've always enjoyed New Year. You know, I've always had a great time in Japan. But, you know, generally I'm in Japan. Uh, my rent is paid. Uh, everything is paid. My phone, everything is just bills that come in every day, right? So it's all normal. And even then, it's good. And I always make the best of it. I always have a great time. But... It's not like an epic time to be in Japan. You know, like New Year's is pretty quiet. Um, if you've never been in Japan for New Year's, it's pretty neat because they eat different food and stuff. But, you know, honestly, the way we go about it, and we're not going to be hanging out with like a Japanese family, so they're not going to be cooking the traditional food, right? It's called Osechi Ryori. And we're probably not even going to have it because it's probably going to be... Osechi Ryori is not cheap, right? I've always had it for free, but if you pay for it, it's like it's like a Christmas dinner. It's it's going to cost you money, right? Uh, it's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard to make, and it's not that great either. It's like famous for not being tasty, but it's very interesting, and it takes a lot of work, and it's unique, and it's artistic, and everything, right? So it's not like something the boys will be like, "God damn, gotta have, <laughs> gotta get a Osechi Ryori, man." <laughs> So, yeah, no, I think it's a smart, it's, it's like we, we, we look at everything and then we decide on the fucking best, right? So, yeah, totally. Right. So that it's, it's good. And if anybody's there, like Alex, I'll say 100%, I can give him a total rundown of how great New Year's can be. But for people that, have, that are flying from overseas, paying for hotels, have a lot of options, um, I would say better to save that money you know, for a few more days in fucking uh, in Oshima next summer, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, right? Then, um, I, I probably could be around that area for Christmas, but I don't know if I'll be able to do New Year's or not with my uh, my work schedule. So, so like, that's where I, I don't want to put it all my hope on hitting there for, like, uh, Christmas or, or New Year's anyways. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's just, uh, for me, it just makes sense to do to do like two and a half weeks just sounds perfect and then after that maybe all right all right adventures there with you guys okay so two and a half weeks so looking at the schedule here uh you're gonna get there on the 21st right summit's on 24th yeah, yeah like 21st or 22nd okay so i was thinking 22nd oh. so let's say well i mean it depends on price of tickets and stuff but let's say 22nd right Exactly. Okay, so 22nd, so one week is the 29th, right? And two weeks is, uh, let's see, three, four, five, six. Six. Uh, six of December. I'm kind of counting. I don't have a December calendar. So six, and then another half, seven, eight, nine, nine or ten December. Okay, yeah. so let's see here. I'm going to put this in our chat. Okay, let's see here. So arrive, 
and I think it's going to be Osaka, you know, or or Kansai area, right? In that in that area, right? Kan yeah, Kan it's called Kansai. So Kansai Osaka Kansai area, twenty second, leave December. What day did we just say? Okay, let's see. So, okay, so let's. Flight like 10th because you have to get better flights on a Sunday or Monday. Oh, okay. So let's say 10th. You know, so, it's. You know, flexible right there. Yeah, it's general, right. Okay. All right. So, what, what, what has been good about this is now. See, before I was like going to contact my Tokyo friends and. You know what I mean? I was going to like. Uh, think about buses and all that. But if we're just going to do skiing, now the one thing about skiing is is that it is a long way from Osaka to the ski resort and back. Just FYI. It's like a fucking trek, like for sure. Because now if we fly, it's easy breezy, right? And flights make sense, actually, you know? Uh, well, you don't have For sure we can, and we're going to go to Koyasan and stuff, so I would say let's plan. Okay, so let's just start thinking the exact plan. So I would say Osaka uh, 22nd, 23rd. Right. Okay. So twenty. Okay. So Osaka twenty second, twenty third. Kyoto twenty fourth to twenty sixth. Okay. And let's shoot for Koyasan twenty seven to twenty eight. Okay. And then and then skiing and then um, let's say Osaka. Osaka, maybe like one day, 29, 30. Yeah, let's do that. Let's say 29, 30. We'll give, it, give us a couple days back in Osaka. Because Osaka is pretty fucking bitching, actually. Yeah, there's a oh, lot yeah. to see. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot there. And uh, it's good for cruising, too. Osaka is good for cruising. Like, you just kind of kind of cruise in Osaka, you know. It's kind of like Shinjuku. You know, once you're there, you just kind of set up, you know. You go wherever you want, right? It's all good. So those dates are flexible. We might, might want to stay in Osaka another day or whatever. And then we just have to decide uh, snowboard, like decide uh, where to go, how to get there, and days. And then end, end back in Osaka. So the snowboarding is going to be some money. Like, it's going to cost money. Because if we're going to fly, right, you know, we've got to get flights, right? So now that'll be – I can have my friends start to look for flights. So that's what okay. I'll do. Where, where's the snowboarding area? It's, it's all yeah, way up way north. Up. It's all way past Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. It uh, it does it does because the thing is is that okay it's not set in stone it's just an idea but like for example the other way is like you were saying like basically uh, let's see let's just think this through so we are now the thirtieth of November and we're in Osaka now let's just say. We took a bus, a night bus, and arrived in Tokyo on the 1st, okay? Uh, would be Friday the 1st, right? Now, yeah. Thursday night, the bus is going to be reasonable, uh, be cheaper than Friday, I think. Yeah, it's not weekend price, I don't think. So Thursday night, we get there. 
we leave Friday night. It's really easy to take that bus, by the way. That bus is like real easy. It's no stress. So we go to Osaka. We go to Tokyo. We we check into Shinjuku fucking hostel, and uh, we cruise around o- Tokyo. Okay, okay. Let's let's let's. I'm gonna write this out as a possibility, right? But overnight bus. Overnight bus. Uh, November thirtieth to Tokyo. Uh, da, da, da. Stay Tokyo. Uh, let's the yeah. Let's say uh, so. We get there on the first. So we stay the first night, the second night, the third. And so so first through third. Uh, let's see one oops, one through Maybe third. Maybe to the snowboarding office. Tokyo. And then, yeah, Monday, then Monday, uh, the third is Monday, right? Or no, see, the third is no, Sunday. So fourth, yeah. Uh, the fourth, yeah. Head uh, skiing fourth of December. Okay, so we go fourth. Uh, so we, we uh, spend the night on the... F- so we go... On the fourth, let's see. Nah, it's probably going to be the fifth when we actually ski. Let's just say fourth or fifth. Let's see, fourth or fourth, fifth. fifth. You could like to travel up there. Yeah, let's let's. We got to decide because if if it's much more expensive to stay near the resorts, which it probably will be, we're better off to stay an extra night. In uh, in Tokyo, right? I would say, and then just hang out, and then just leave early in the morning, right? And then we go, we we fly straight, or we or we take the bus, or we take the train straight to the lifts and start fucking skiing, right? The same day. That makes okay. more sense to me, because we got a great place in Tokyo, right? You know, we've kind of we've we've mastered Tokyo. And it's cheap, and the food yeah. is cheap, and everybody has a good time. Everybody likes Tokyo. Like I love you, Tokyo. That's like, I want, I just want to go back if I feel that too. Yeah, everybody loves Tokyo. Now, if we are going to go this way, right, uh, then we basically, my feeling, okay, is that let's skip Hokkaido. Let's try not to fly if we're going to do this. The reason is, is we're already in Tokyo, right? So we spent money and time to get to Tokyo. So from Tokyo, it's easy to get to, uh, it's easy to get to Nagano. It's only three hour bus ride. Uh, There's a Shinkansen. Uh, There's a Shinkansen to Zaos, uh, which goes straight to the lifts. If we could afford it, let's see how much it is to, uh, let's just check it while we're talking, right? Shinkansen, Shinkansen ticket, uh, Tokyo to Zaos, uh, uh, Yamagata, ZAO, uh, ski lifts, okay. Okay. Okay, so, all right, so this is really good call. Okay, so there's a there's a uh, train takes two hours and fifty six minutes. Okay, and it cost eighty five hundred yen for the cheap one. Uh, for one way, or? one way, one way, and twelve thousand for the expensive one. So it depends on which. That that one might not be so flexible because I don't know when they run. You know, we might be forced into taking an expensive one just because we want to get there and ski right away. You know, uh, so let's say let's say close to twelve thousand. Okay, so two hours fifty six minutes. What's beautiful about that is. 
is uh, is that it's so easy. You know what I mean? Like, it might be cheaper to do that than to fuck around, right? You know what I mean? Like, because if we start taking buses, the bus is eight hours and 36 minutes. So basically the bus is six hours longer. Okay. And wow. that's Tokyo to Yamagata. And then that, that stops in Sendai. And then there's another bus. We have to change buses to get that eight hours and 36 minutes uh, to Yamagata. So, okay. So basically, realistically, uh, let's go back to the dates here. Okay. So Heads King on the 5th. Let's say the 5th. Okay. So we leave. Uh, we leave on the 5th. Okay. Early in the morning, right? And we catch the Shinkansen. This is if we're going to Zhao, right? We, we catch Shinkansen. And uh, you're like, let's say we get there at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, right? So we get up early, right? And we get there at 6. We're going to arrive three hours later from whenever we get on. The, let's see here. Okay, the Shinkansen leaves every hour. So it's pretty easy to time this one. Okay, so it's not it's not like a real unrealistic to time this that we could. Yeah, it's going to be fucking early. That's fucking fact, because we don't want to spend that extra night up in the mountains, basically. Yeah. Okay. You think that's going to be way more expensive to do it that way? Oh, oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Okay. And we're only paying like for a, a plane, a train ticket. That's it, right? That's fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, It's easy either way. We figure it out. So the, and the yen is so low right now. It's crazy. Like every day, the price of these tickets is going down for us. It's crazy. It's crazy. The Japan bank just said they're not going to support the yen. So it's not going to jump back up. So that 12,000 yen, which would have been $145 in the past, is uh let's see what is it now twelve thousand yen in usd dude it's only 80 bucks yeah that's crazy and that's the fancy shinkansen that's the the super fast one dude 80 bucks that's 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 less than skiing in southern california because you gotta buy two tanks of gas right you know that's crazy that's fucking crazy Wow, 80 bucks. And that's the fancy one. Dude, that's crazy. Because it, it just drops so us off. Yeah. Oh, dude, we're fucking balling, man. We're on the Shinkansen. We're all laughing together, like zipping through the mountains, fucking drop, getting dropped off right at the fucking lifts. No possibility of anything confusing happening at all. Okay. Uh, and then the only thing, and then we just ski right away. So I, we need to check into lockers or whatever we got to do because we won't, we won't have time to go check in and do a bunch of bullshit. Right. So we got to do, someone's got to do some research on, uh, yeah, like Yamagata skiing. Okay. I, I would say there's three things that, that, that guys want to look for. When it comes to Yamagata. Yeah. Okay. One is, is there a package tour? Because that's, that's the easiest. That includes the Shinkansen. Is there a package tour? Uh, if, oh, for the ski lifts and stuff? For the whole thing. The bus ticket, the train ticket, whatever the fuck they have. A plane ticket. The, the, the tours are great because they've thought of everything. Everything's included. There's no chance okay. of any kind of, you know, like things that will surprise us money-wise. You pay one price, you fucking just follow directions, and you get there and you come back. It's so easy. Japanese tours are absolutely rock solid. So okay. uh, we look into three things, okay? Tour from Tokyo. Actually, quite a few things here. I would say two things. 
probably three. It's worth a couple searches. Uh, Tokyo to Nagano Skiing. Okay, and that's the, the. Let me get the official name too. Nagano Big Ski. I don't want to make sure nobody uh, wastes time here. Uh, it's called Shiga Koen. Yeah, Hakuba Valley, Shiga Kogen. Uh, it's 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 really difficult to miss, but I just want to make sure nobody you know. Okay. It's the big one, Shiga Kogen uh, Mountain Resort. Okay, and uh, Shiga Kogen. Now all this is going to depend. Uh, or Zaos. Zao Yama Gata. I'm going to write all this down. Uh, prefecture. Or, and let me get the official name for um, uh, Hokkaido. Okay. Hokkaido Big Ski Resort. Okay. Yeah, Niseko. Uh, so basically, there's a bunch of ski resorts in Hokkaido. And uh, I've always just called them all Niseko. Because Niseko Village. Because they're all kind of right near each other. Yeah, Niseko Village basically, right? Okay, so... I'm going to put this in the, uh, there's a bunch of names for it, but it's pretty easy to keep your, uh, in Hokkaido. Okay. So, okay. So we got three places. I got the official name for everything. Shiga Kogen. Uh, I'll send you this right now so you can read it. Okay. Yeah, I can always edit it later. Okay, so Shiga Kogen Mountain Resort in Nagano, Zao in Yamagata Prefecture, or Niseko in Hokkaido. And Niseko and also uh, Shiga Kogen, there's going to be a few different names running around. Like there's like little parts that they call different names. But just do a quick search and make sure that it's the main one. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it doesn't have to be yeah. the same name. It's just, like, it's walkable and it's right there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's these, like, wing, wing nut places that are small, off the beaten path. We do not want those. Like, no, no. We want these big ones. And the reason why the big ones, they're, like, amazing. They're, like, so fucking great. There's so many fucking different... Like, this is why we're going to get powder, is because they're just so huge that if you're up there on the first lift, you're fucking going to be powder for sure, right? As long as there's snow, right? Yeah. So it's like, they're, they're massive. Even if you got a bunch of powder hounds up there, they can't do them all. There's too many, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's just too insane. All three of these places. Wow, okay, so, so Shiga Kogen, Zhao... Niseko. Okay. So those are the three things. So what we want to do is a little bit of search. And don't don't get overwhelmed. Anybody listening, don't get overwhelmed. But I just like I think we should all do a little bit of searching here. Uh try to find out the smartest thing. Maybe even use uh the the the, the room booking websites to search and then use uh like Alex Alex is in um Japan. So he should walk into a JTB and different uh, travel companies and just physically ask about this because he's got the advantage. He can just physically walk in and ask, hey, I'm thinking about going either Shiga Kogen, Zhao, or Niseko. What do you got? You know what I mean? And then it's going to be obvious in the end what's the best deal. Okay, so we're we're looking at it. These are this is even though it's complicated, it's worth going through this. Yeah. 
Okay, we're looking at it from many perspectives. Snow at the end of the day. Okay, that's like a last minute. If we wait, if we wait to the last minute, and we, we could wait to the last minute. Okay, if we buy the bus tickets or whatever ourselves, right? Uh, snow. Which resort has the best, easiest access, right? Obviously, price, dates, um, and the amount of guys we have. So that's the other big question is how many guys are definitely in if it's on those dates, right? So if it's on the 4th or 5th, and we could, I know Sean might want to come. So we might want to go a couple days early and shave off a couple days, which we have plenty of time to do that and still have a great time doing everything we've done in Osaka. We could shave a day off Osaka, no problem. We could shave a day off Tokyo and be two days early, which would be huge for someone like Sean, right? So, yeah. and uh, and then we all snowboard together. Yeah, yeah, this is, this, is, this is what I'm thinking now, is basically Luke is the only one that has to go home right away. So he's going to leave on Sunday after the summit. But pretty much everybody else is going to be able to be there the two and a half weeks. Okay, so that's great. So we're going to be together the whole time, two and a half weeks. And we just want to make a great plan, right? You guys now know yeah. that you know the great, yeah, you know the great resorts. And then we just put the Ronin mindset into it, right? Do some research, think clearly, look at maps, be diligent, ask questions, and then find the best solution. And I would say... There's two ways to do it, obviously, is to have all the information and then we, we find a really good deal and just buy it. Like soon, okay? We buy it cheap, we get it soon, we're locked in to go to somewhere. The negative with that is, what if the snow sucks? Yeah. It's going to be brutal. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's possible the snow is going to suck. But you never know. Mother Nature, right? You know. So... If we're up there and there's like not enough snow to ski or there's, you know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, dude, that would be brutal. Because we are, just so you guys know, we are going early in the season. Okay? So start to watch the snow reports in Japan, too. Just to have a general, like, just, just, just once a week or whatever, just check snow in Japan. Like, like where is the first snow and all that, right? Uh, I think... By December, it's a little sketchy. It's most likely to be great snow in Hokkaido, the far north. And uh, second, most likely to be in Zaus. And third, most likely to be in Nagano. Okay? Um, because cause, cause one is like the furthest north, right? By far. And Zaus is really famous for a lot of snow. And beautiful snow. Uh, Zaus... If I was going to say what's my favorite is Zao. Just for just for skiing and snowboarding. Now, for girls and for partying and stuff, I would say if there's snow, probably the best is going to be Nagano. Because Nagano is That's closer to Tokyo. Yeah, Nagano is kind of like uh Enoshima for skiing. Basically. That's the way to think about that. That's because you guys know. So Enoshima for skiing is 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 gonna be Nagano. Now, Zaos is gonna be more like uh where the waves are huge, but nobody's there. You know, there, there'll be people there. There'll be there'll be, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Kaido. You might get the best girl of your life in Hokkaido. I mean, there's definitely girls up there. It's a huge resort. Um, tend to be rich girls. It's more expensive up there. Uh, the snow can be incredible sometimes. I will tell you, when I went to fucking Hokkaido, one of my friends, he uh, sold me a package that he uh, bought and then he couldn't use. I had got a half-price deal to go to Hokkaido and... It was icy. And I was so bummed. Yeah, I was so bummed. Yeah, oh, it sucked. I was on a snowboard in my ass, 
just kept hitting the ground so hard. By the second day, I could hardly stand it. I was almost crying. Like, I don't know if you ever snowboarded on ice, but it's like it's so painful, yes. man. Yeah. You're like, you start, yeah, you're like, it is not fun, man. It is not fun. You're just like you know you're gonna fall every time, and it starts to hurt over time. It just gets worse. Now. Me and Dave, it was me and Drink and Dave, and we had a great, we, we, we fucking laughed our way through it. It was fine, but damn, if I would have gotten injured, I wouldn't be laughing, you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, so, you know, definitely powder is fucking pretty important, right? Uh, now, that was late in the season. Uh, we're going early in the season, so the idea it's going to be icy is pretty unrealistic. Uh, well, no, I shouldn't say that. It, 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 it is very possible. It could snow early. It could rain. It could ice over. Anything could happen, right? But generally, the early season, if there's good snow, it's usually good, right? And the negative about early season is that there might not be that much snow, right? So Zaus is famous for the snow being, like, so tall. It's as tall as those huge Japanese trees, where you just see the top three feet of them sticking out. And, and they call it the snow monsters, right? And uh, you're standing next to a tree that's like fucking 50 feet high, and it's only three feet high. And it, and it looks beautiful. They, it's, like, it's like majestic. It's, it's, it's surreal. It's surreal. Zhao is like insane snow. When it, it's like fucking great. Uh, so like I say, if I have a choice and the price was the same, which it won't be, but if price was the same, if I if I could do either one, Zao is 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 fucking raging. It's great. We're going there for the snow anyway. We're going there to snowboard. We're not going there for the girls. Now, if we were staying for a month, right, then I would say we definitely want to go to fucking Nagano. Because we can zip up there, we can hitchhike, we can take buses, and we could go back and forth to Tokyo. We could figure the place Whoa. out. Leave for a we while and come him. back. Yeah, we could hit a boat, right? Uh, not in the time we got. No. Oh, oh, for sure. Oh, it's way too far okay. to go. Yeah, yeah. No. no, whichever one we go, we're committed. We're one hundred percent committing okay. to that area. So we're choosing one or the other or the other. And we're choosing a package tour or not package tour. And then we're looking at package tour is easy because it has everything included and it'll make a decision for us which way we're going, like Shinkansen or plane, right? Because there's planes that go to Nagano even, you know. It, 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 as long as it's part of a package tour, I don't really care uh, which if it's plane or Shinkansen. I, I prefer Shinkansen if we're buying the tickets, but... Sometimes flights are really cheap in Japan too. So if there's like a super cheap flight for 30 bucks and we're getting up there and then we take a bus, like whatever, you know. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. If package tours don't look like they're a good deal this year, not early in the season, you know, uh, then we got to piece it together. And that means uh, buses, tickets, and this and that. And realistically, if we're going to piece it together, we're going to go either to Nagano or Zao. We're not going to go to Hokkaido. Yeah. Fuck Hokkaido. It's just too, too risky. The reason is, is let's say that, let's just say there's a miracle. We find a flight for 50 bucks to Hokkaido, right? And uh, let's say five of us are going, or six of us, right? Let's say six of us. And five of us buy our tickets right away. And the, the sixth guy can't because he he's in a different time zone. He goes to sleep. He wakes up in the morning. And then he's got to pay a ton of money to join us. You know? Because yeah. it's so far that the, that the price varies a lot, right? So okay. unless one guy is going to, you know, volunteer to buy all the plane tickets on his credit card and then everybody pays him back, which I'm sure somebody might do that for, for a friend, you know? Uh, but certainly never, not for someone they haven't met, right? So... Let's leave that in the air, but I, I don't think – I just think it's too daunting to go to Hokkaido if we're not on a package tour. Yeah, it, I think – and I, honestly, I think Zao or Nagano sound pretty great. Yeah. Not as, so far from Tokyo that I'm sure logistically it wouldn't be as bad for us to pull 
Right, right. And 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 Zhao like uh Nagano is really close. Man, Nagano's not far. Nag- Nagano's good. If there's snow, I'm I'm hundred percent in Nagano. Right. Yeah, uh, so, like, go, go to where, what's the best deal for us. There's always girls pulling away. No problem. So, we should always, I think, we focus on that. So, oh. whichever is the best deal, the oh, best deal okay. there. So, what we could have Alex do is Alex could do two things. One, he can walk into the uh, JTBs anytime. They, they, they'll greet you, they'll help you. Great service, hand job, all that. Costs nothing. And uh, he can walk into all the different tourism agencies, the, J- the, the Chinese ones, the J- Indian ones. I mean, as, as he's walking around Shinjuku, he can just like fucking pop his head in and he might find a gem, you know. You know, uh, he, might, he might find something not JTB that's really good. So check, check the tours. We can look online and he can walk in. Uh, and the next thing is, is to... Uh, randomly search snow this year where it's snowing. You know, as we get closer, you know, we're going to see maybe even now. Yeah. Well, maybe even, uh, maybe Nagano's even open now. Who knows? I don't know. Um, and then the next one is to check, um, just kind of like once in a while search for, you know, like we might get a miracle where there's a youth hostel in Nagano. I seriously doubt it, but if we could find some kind of like super cheap place in Nagano, that'll make the decision for us almost, right? Like, yeah, if you can stay there and chill out. Yeah, if we can chill in Nagano, like no hassles. I mean, it's fun to be there anyway. Like, even if the snow is not super great. Nagano's close. It's easy. If we find a cheap way to be in Nagano far, we're gonna have fun, right? It's gonna be. We're gonna be throwing snowballs and shit. And the place is huge. <laughs> yeah, there's. If you want to, you can like party all night there. Like, there's definitely stuff going on in Nagano. Yeah, because it, okay. it's a huge resort. Like, look at it on the map. It's massive. The mountain is just huge. So there's definitely more going right. going on there. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well, it, it seals the deal, except for the fact that the price could be crazy, because you know you never know. With prices are random, you know. Like if if all the Tokyo people are going to Nagano, maybe things will change where it's no longer cheap, or this year it's not cheap in early season, and then we get ourselves like a killer package to Zaos. Fuck, Zaos is like if we get the Shinkansen package. And we got a place right near the lifts. Dude, Zaus is fucking riding on a fucking cloud, bro. It's a cloud, man. <laughs> it's the easiest It's the easiest snowboarding you've ever done in your life. You're gonna be fucking just loving it, man. Like you're gonna your your legs will be sore, but in a good way, you know? Not from hitting the ice, you know. You're just gonna be like, oh my god, you know. You won't even have time for fucking girls. Like, you're going to be so tired every day. Just fucking from laughing, you know? <laughs> so so keep oh, that in I mind. I love this idea. All right. All right. So there's kind of like as much as I can, as many ideas, as many angles. And, yeah. So let's just do this. Let's plan on uh, two and a half weeks. So buy your ticket for two and a half weeks. So getting there about the 22nd, leaving about the 10th. And then let's, uh, we'll figure the rest out. Everything is going to work out, guys, no matter what. If we, if there's, let's say, let's say that's the worst year of all, there's no snow. Dude, we're going to have a great time in Tokyo. Right? Yeah, Yeah, totally. Exactly. And we're going to have a great time in Kyoto. It's going to be insane with the leaves, man. Fuck, I mean. Down there, there's a lot to see down in Kansai. If if there's no snow, uh, then fucking Kansai City, let's start looking at Kansai. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's start fucking checking out. We can go spend a night in or a couple nights in uh, in uh, Nara. 
We can go to One Night in Nada is beautiful. Uh, that's got the deer. You know, they come up to you, you know. There's like tons of chicks go to Nada. So if, yeah, this is a great end to the call. If no snow happens in that period, right? It's like, let's say it's a late snow year. You guys, we're going to have a fucking great time. There's so many great options. So we got, uh, let's see here. Let me look at the map here real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, con side map. Okay. Yeah, so we got, um, okay, are you looking at the con side map at all right now? Okay. Get on the con side map there. So oh, yeah, yeah. everything is like small here and close. Okay, so if you look at Kobe, yeah. Nara, Kyoto, these are all close, like insanely close, like easy, easy. I wouldn't say you guys wrong on this one. This is like we could easily spend the night in Kobe and just fuck around and then just, you know, be a Nara the next night. No big deal. Yeah. No ripoffs. No making, you know, having to reserve anything or Shinkansen or anything. Like, we just walk over to the fucking nearby train station and buy a ticket. Period. So we got we got Kyoto, and then look look above Kyoto. You see that ocean right there? Mm, the ocean above it or below? Yeah. Above it. Okay, see the map? Okay, so Kyoto is right next to the ocean. Now, if you look at Osaka, it's next to the ocean. But that's not ocean. Look at those train lines, those yellow lines. Those yellow lines mean no beaches. They mean industrial, okay? <laughs> they, 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 they don't mean beautiful beaches, okay? But now look north of Kyoto, which is only a few miles. Like, and we're not talking far at all. There's Arashiyama. is beautiful. And there's tons. There's actually a picturesque village. If you look above Kyoto, so I'm looking at Osaka right now. And then you look above, you see the Kyoto. And then to the left, you see that, like, little peninsula coming up that comes up to the right? The big, the peninsula. Yeah. yeah, kind of above Hyogo. That there's a little village there that's that's so picturesque. People fly from all over the world just to go in there. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's like it looks like uh, oh my god, it looks like uh, Bahamas or something, right? It's so beautiful, man. So yeah, oh yeah, there's some real beauty, beautiful ocean up there, uh, and that's the Japan Sea. So that's totally different vibe than the o Pacific Ocean, which we've been at. I'm not saying we're going to want to go there very long, but if we're in Kyoto, we can be there in yeah. like a few minutes, right? We, we, it doesn't take long. So we could easily, uh, wow. yeah, we could be up there. We might find a cheap place to stay and just you know, just cruise along the coast a little bit. You know, we wouldn't have to do a major thing, but we could definitely plan something. Uh, and that's beautiful up there, beautiful. And it's a totally different vibe. And then the other thing I forgot to say on the video is that... Uh, Above Kyoto is um, Ohara, O O H A R A, Ohara, and Ohara. I think I put this in another audio, but just in case uh, somebody didn't hear it, Ohara is a, a public bus ride from downtown Kyoto. So basically, it's like taking the Yamanote line. It comes all the time. You jump on, you go there, you get off at the last stop. It's easy. It's cheap. So we're going to definitely spend a day in Ohara. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Ohara is like, go, Ohara is really, okay, go, go to Google Images and search Ohara near Kyoto. Search Google Images. O-O-H-A-R-A. -A. I got to give it a second. I got to switch to Google Images. Okay. Above, above, uh, near Kyoto. Yeah. Make sure you get the right one. It's, oh yeah, it's O-H-A-R-A, -A, right? Uh, it could be, it could be two O's or it could be one. The people spell it differently. It's actually technically two O's, but. Oh. Yeah, it looks, looks like beautiful nature area. 
Ah, uh, it's 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 like all of the like basically Ohara is the real Kyoto. It's the real Kyoto. So a lot of the great temples are in Ohara. And uh, the famous one, which I forget the name, but there's one temple where all the, the samurai uh, uh, committed suicide when their clan lost the war. And uh, the blood went all over the floor. And then they took the floor and put it on the roof. So you can see the outline of samurai's blood on the roof of the, uh, of the temple up there in Ohara. So we're 100% yeah, going up there. Oh, it's fucking great. And so many people go to Kyoto and don't go to Ohio because they think it's like a big deal. And people take, people take taxis. They take uh, private drivers and, and they take the tours. And it, it, it is major, major, major cornholing because you don't need any of that. We jump on a public bus that leaves every 15 minutes and it costs us fucking three bucks to get up there. We can literally walk up there. We can walk up. That's how close it is. We could. I, I've taken a. I, 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 I bargained with a homeless guy for a bicycle once, and I rode a bicycle up there, and uh, rented a bicycle from the homeless guy in uh, in Kyoto, and uh, I rode the bicycle up there, and it was so snowy that I kept eating shit on the bicycle, so I ended up walking most of the way. So uh, yeah, I walked a lot of, up the mountain, and it's like so. Don't worry. It's like it's not a big deal. Uh, but Ohara is absolutely fabulous. So basically, for anybody who's looking for a magical Kyoto, it's, it's going to be even better than I said in the original video. Like, originally I just said the night viewings. There is so much more. And Ohara is definitely going to be a big part of the summit. So we're going to go up there during the summit and do meetings up there for sure. I don't care if it's raining or whatever. We're going to go up there. It's going to be awesome. It, it's going to be beautiful. And we can sit in different, like, uh, fancy schmancy places and drink tea and look out at these. Uh, you know, they have these. The temples are set up in Ohara. The real temples, the real Japanese architecture is designed around the view. So your living room, you, you don't have it. It's like indoor, outdoor Japanese houses. So you can open the whole wall to a view, a beautiful view and appreciate the nature and be of you. So the whole town is what Japan used to be. So when we go up there, we're, we're not going to be cheap on buying tea. Like, we're going to be going to these places. We're going to be finding the places with the killer view. And then we'll, we'll definitely do one of these, like, really fucking Japanese, very cool situations where we just sit there and drink tea and, and look out and discuss the fucking garden and shit. So we're going to do that. And then maybe even have a summit meeting at one of those places if we can find a place where we have a little privacy, right? Uh, and if not, we'll climb up in the bamboo forest and do a, do a meeting up there. But there's plenty of, plenty of places. It's, it's beautiful. And it's a very uh, small area, uh, Ohara. So you basically get off the bus. You wander everywhere that you can see, and then you come back and take the bus down. So it's, it's great. It's, a, it's, a, it's the best day trip ever. So we definitely want to go up yeah, there. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great day trip. And I, I would say we should go up there maybe on, uh, maybe like, let's say, uh, let's see. Well, we could do it the day before the summit. We could do it on Thursday. We could do it on Friday. We could do it technically. We could do it on Saturday or we could do it on Sunday. Luke is leaving on Sunday. So for Luke, I would say we probably want to do it early uh, because this would be a shame. It would be a shame. Luke should see the uh, he should see the night viewing one night. He should wander the path of philosophy and he should see Ohara. So let's plan that. So we get those in there. Uh, cool. Basically, I can do that. But uh, just so you guys kind of can start to picture what we're. Yeah. So that's Oh man, the the dripping bamboo water thing is in full force up there, <laughs> <laughs> and the good tea and stuff. Like, oh man, this is what this is what uh, Chime Time wanted last summer, but he was in the wrong season. 
like right now he's like it's getting cold and the tea places are going to be going crazy you know all the ladies will be in their kimonos it, it's, it's perfect it's perfect we just have to kind of find uh as best we can the on the ground tea place where we get the most privacy and and we can also time it where the, the you know like we could do our meeting in the morning you know like most people japanese they go after lunch right we could be up there at fucking uh, we could be up there early one day maybe like nine o'clock you know that would be a good time to be at one of those tea places and then have it as our morning coffee instead of our you know post meal tea right we got to just check the check the schedules and and this is not like skiing we don't have to make a big deal out of this one but um you, you, yeah, we, we, we can totally do this one. And plus, I got good friends up down there, so I can ask them uh, their advice. So there there you go. There's, there's like the whole plan. And that is a plan that rocks regardless of if there's snow or not. Because the, the, yeah. the skiing or not is going to totally depend on uh, nature, mother nature. Yeah. And, and, and really, at the end of the day, even if we don't get up to snowboarding during those week and a half, two weeks and a half, I think we'll have just as good a time either way. I really do. Totally. Totally. Con- Kansai. Totally yeah, Kansai is amazing. And the research that everybody's doing right now about snowboarding in Japan is never going to go to waste. Okay? You're learning the best, some of the best places in the world right now. Like the best ideas, like really great stuff. So if we can't, you know what I mean? Like everybody's young. You're gonna you're gonna find a way to. Uh, we're all gonna be back, right? It's it's just, it's guaranteed, right? Yeah. You know, once you know the best, you just kind of plan around. It. You're like, oh, do you want to go to a shit place, or the best? Um, let me think about that. You know. <laughs> it's like, Easy I, what's that? Yeah, yeah, it's easy. To say. Hmm, let me think here. I want to go with a bunch of fat sweat hogs in a crowded place with expensive, shitty food, right? And uh, listen to people talk about politics. Or do I want to go to snow bunnies and fucking <laughs> own sense? Yeah, oh, let me, let, me, let me think here. You know? Let me, because Japanese snow bunnies are pretty fucking cute, you guys. They really do it up, man. They got the they got the cutest little pink fucking bibs and shit. They do it right. They 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 do everything right, but they do this one very right. <laughs> the little fluffy ears and shit, you know, in the snow and stuff. And uh, like for guys that are getting getting where they're understanding Japanese women, like Alex. Now he's kind of got it down. It sounds like. Uh, you know, you're going to be in a fucking end up in an onsen with a couple of Japanese girls for sure. It's going to happen. You know, it's a it's a very uh, not a difficult thing to do because they go up there to have fun. Right. And a lot of Japanese girls go skiing to cheat. FYI. Because, yeah, yeah. And there's like, yeah, there's even uh, God, this is a great call. Fuck, we should almost put this one online. This is a great fucking call, my man. <laughs> there's so much good information here, dude. Um, the next thing is uh, the, the the Japanese girls. Uh, they there there's even a uh, like uh, etchy magazines right that go to these uh, ski resorts, and what they do is uh, they um, they they go up to the snow bunnies right, and they're like, hey, show me something, you know, and the girl would like. Uh, pop out a titty on the slopes or you know she'll give them a blow job or they'll meet at night at the onsen and they'll do a video of her like undressing her ski clothes and then she'll get like a couple hundred bucks right for that for just undressing for a video right and then for for popping out a titty she might get 10,000 yen right on the ski slopes so what japanese girls do is they kind of like go up uh the, the, the cutie pies the more racy girls they're going up to these ski resorts and they want to do something to make enough money to pay for the trip, you know, so they can ski for free. Right. So guys, guys are like, like Japanese guys are going up there with cameras and offering them like 10,000 yen for stuff. Right. And uh, so 
it can get pretty racy actually on the surface nothing's happening but under the surface like a lot goes down in these ski resorts uh you know for sure because the girls are again they're away from their boyfriends they're uh away from their family and nobody like in the summer right if your girlfriend goes to Enoshima, you're going to be worried okay <laughs> you're going to be stressed you're going to be calling her all the time sending her messages but if she's going skiing you don't even worry about it you know because you figure oh she's going with her friend they're skiing all the time on a package deal and then they the guys don't even worry about it <laughs> yeah yeah it seems totally legit right and meanwhile the girls they're just getting railed in the uh, onsens right so it's good to know what's really going on right and uh even if you don't figure it out the first time like there's going to be certain girls you you're going to get clues based on how they're dressed where they're staying there's going to be some kind of clues. We're going to somehow get information on the ground at some point about what's really going on. And maybe it won't be useful on this trip. It'll be next trip, right? But uh, we'll slowly start to, uh, you know, you got your sniper rifle and you got your target, right? And you're just adjusting it a few millimeters. <laughs> right? A little to the left. A little to the left. That's right. There's, okay. There's a little wind here. I got to wait. Okay. All right, go a little higher, you know. Uh, so yeah, so 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 uh, that's what's really going on at the ski resorts, and uh, so that's kind of a bonus. I didn't want to talk about it too much because uh, whether we'll be able to figure it out in the time allotted or not, who knows? But uh, I'm kind of guessing like Alex might figure it out, you know. And uh, you know, like it might be two in the morning and not have time to tell us, right? He, like, all of a sudden realizes, oh, man, here it is. And then, boom, he gets laid and then wakes up in the morning and tells everybody we're leaving, right? But anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway, keep an eye out for stuff uh, kind of going on uh, up at these resorts. Single girls wanting to have fun, you know, so you might meet girls uh, on the slope, get their line. And then uh, later on, uh, you know, meet them up somewhere for a bowl of ramen or whatever. And it's very, it's very innocent. Like, talking to girls on the ski slope is not, like, uh, looked down upon. Everybody's having fun. They're like, oh, my gosh, the snow is so great. You can just talk to anybody up there and just start chatting. You know, it's like you can fly up to the girls and spray snow all over them, you know, and then laugh, you know. They love it. It's, it's totally fun, you know. I mean, obviously, you don't want to, like, run into them or, you know, you know, drench them with it. But you just, like, you know what I mean? Just be flirting, right? You can totally flirt on the slopes. Like, it's a great place to flirt. So, yeah, yeah it's a great place. Uh, everybody's up there in a different mode, and they're not expecting it, right? So, it's, it's it, and you can help people too, right? Like, let's say you're a good skier. You can help these girls go down, uh, like, a medium grade or something that, that's kind of, like, difficult for them, right? And uh, be there. You know what I mean? You can, like, help her down the slope and then leave. You don't have to be a white knight. You can just zip off and fucking you're gone, right? And uh, it's fun. It's fun. There's a, there's a lot of tactics you can have as you're kind of owning these resorts, you know, especially if you're good, if you're a good skier, a snowboarder, right? It could be really fun. It could be really fucking fun. Tons of girls go up to these places and, and it's their first time. And they're basically, uh, uh, they're, they, it's their first time skiing. So they're taking like the, the, the bunny slope and they're like taking the yeah. rope and they're like taking the rope. What's it called? Uh, it's not even a, a lift. It's like a rope rope way or something. Uh, anyway, they, they, t they're, they're doing that. And then they're just falling down and laughing and you can come down there and help them out and then zip off, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's giving a blast. absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So there's, there, there's, there's some ideas for the trip and, uh, so we're going to pack it in. We're going to pack it in two and a half weeks. And it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be, and, and we're going to make it fun for the guys that are only there three days too. So it's going to be, you know, Luke, Luke is a, he's the diehard. He's come to tons of stuff. He's, he's, he's making a sacrifice to come out here. Um, and uh, we're going to make it super fun for Luke too. So <laughs> he just called, he called me last week. We had such a great call too. 
he's so into it. It's just like, Luke is such an interesting guy, man. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hanging out. He came to the last summit, right, in Japan. Uh, the, the, the one two years ago, three years ago, whatever, four years ago. He came to that one, yeah. He was a, he was, he was yeah, a character. Oh, you haven't met him? Okay, yeah, Taiwanese, Taiwanese family. Yeah, Luke's a fucking great guy. Yeah, Luke's, Luke's, everybody loves Luke. So he's going to be cruising. He's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be exploring. That guy never stops walking or running or riding bicycles. So he would walk to Ohada for sure. <laughs> him and Bank, him and Bank, yeah. All right, all right. Well, there you go. There's some ideas, and then, fuck, maybe I'm gonna put this online. I think this is, this is a fun conversation. There's a lot to learn, and who knows? Maybe it'll fire someone up for the trip because now we know, the trip, guys, is set in stone now. It's two and a half weeks. It's not, it's not gonna be this open-ended thing. I'm, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna get my ticket, and then I'll be going. And I think a lot of guys will do that. Uh, Alex will still be there in Japan. So there's going to be guys that are in Japan. Edgar comes back and forth. He was at the last summit. He'll be around at some point soon, I suspect. And, uh, and once you got a feel of Japan, it's easy to continue. It's because it's of the trains, right? Wouldn't you agree with that, wouldn't you say? Totally. And also, I think it's like, this is a fun call for us, uh, just kind of learning how to like, uh, make plans with each other, you know? Cause right. Don't do this. This is this is cool for me too. Right, it's like how I'm to make. Call, figure it out, get it set down. Right, it's it's how to make a plan with, with a lot of different options. Like most most people don't plan with this many options. They it's too complicated for them, but it actually isn't that complicated. But you know, it just overwhelms them. But we can do it in a few Google searches and a few smart conversations like this, and we're gonna make a killer decision, the best decision, in the end of the day, and that's worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's worth it. You can't be lazy if you want the best in life. You know? You got to fucking... You got to put in the thinking, right? To get the wisdom. Yeah. And let's prove... Let's put, the, let's, let's put this to proof. Pedal to the metal in real life. And have an absolute fucking kick-ass trip. I got my new iPhone 15 Pro Max. So I can shoot killer videos and shots. And anybody comes to the summit, we're gonna end up with your best Tinder shots of your life. We're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that. So take a couple cool shirts and like something you look good in, your fucking studly outfit, your cool jeans. And uh, we always do this. Like I've noticed, this is kind of a thing at summits. Is guys are really cool about helping other guys do stuff. Whether whether it's like pick out a cool fuck. I got a new fucking cool necklace, by the way. It's fucking dope, and it only cost me a dollar and a half. 50 baht. Nice. Less than a dollar and a half, yeah. And uh, we help each other do stuff. We point out stuff. Hey, you'd look good in that. You should fucking, you're like, this shirt doesn't look good on me. You're like, you, you wear it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, people are like that at the summits. And we also help each other so that we get, uh, I think everybody wants to have a killer picture of the ultimate Japan in the background. You know, with you looking really good. And I think that would be one of our goals is that everybody leaves with one just epic, epic shot. And once we got the epic yeah. setup, we'll just all go in there and do it, right? And we'll get the right lighting, we'll get the right phone, we'll get the right, you know what I mean? If it's whatever kind of uh, shot, a portrait or non, you know what I mean? We're going to get like Japan. Neat bone. Neat bone. That's the yell all the baseball games. Uh, so yeah, so so we're gonna we're gonna do that too. So bring cool clothes. Don't be, don't be dressed like a total fuckwad, you know, because it's worth it. And and, and, and by the way, uh, Uniqlo has cheap clothes for guys who didn't come the last summit. Uh, cheap clothes for the season. They look really good. They always fit, especially if you're in good shape. They always fit. They're 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 if you're in decent shape, they fucking. Great clothes. If you're super overweight, then, then Uniqlo is not the place for you. But Uniqlo is a Japanese chain. They're everywhere. They're cheap. They have sales. And so we can get you, uh, we can help you pick out something that will really fit the vibe in, China, in Japan, you know. Whether it's cool jeans for like 25 bucks or whatever, you know. 
I got some great jeans for $27. They're so fucking cool, man. Perfect winter jeans, too. Perfect. So, from nice. Uniqlo. Yeah. They're, 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 they would be even less now because the yen's gone down for them since then. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, there's all I can think of. And, uh, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe later as we get closer to right before we go, we might want to do one more call. Just to kind of, sure thing. just about the trip, and maybe we can get some other guys on this call next time. You know, they'll understand now what 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 we're doing here. You want to be yeah. on, on calls like this because you want to have a say. So you know, your wisdom should be in, in, in input, right? So that it gets a better decision. The more, you know what I mean. The more you understand how to plan, like you said, how to plan a cool trip, and then also your your wisdom, right? Your your feelings. Your needs, right? All get included, right? Yeah. Like like Luke. If he wouldn't have told me, I wouldn't even know, you know? But he's like, I'm gone on Sunday. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pack yeah. it in, baby. You know? Yeah, no, no. We know what we can do is uh, a schedule, like a scheduled Zoom call for all the guys at the summit when you get closer. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so you create, you create the link and everyone gets the invite and everyone knows, like, you know, figure out time that that's a great idea. That, that, could be cool way that way it's not like last minute, but everyone has like, all right, on this day or at this time. Hey, you know, that, that that's the key. You're right. It's my fault. I'm always doing things on the fly. Would you would you mind planning it, being the guy? No, I, I don't mind. Okay, and then we'll have people contact you for the next. For the, We'll just do one right before we go. So everybody kind of just throws in. It might only be a few minutes long, but it'll still be worthwhile. Right, right, right. That sounds great, man. That sounds great. Focus will be on the trip, obviously, and not you know, personal stuff. We'll save that for the summit. Yeah, and if any if any new flamers suddenly join in and want to come, you know, we'll get the crew, we'll get the new crew in there, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much, dude. That was a great call. That was. Uh, hey, you got it. Thanks, Ron. And I will see you in uh, Nippon, baby. Okay.